So it behooves us to sort of figure out, okay, then what's the difference between the population and the sample distribution? Well, here, um, it might be helpful to just think of the population as sort of like the truth. This is what we're really interested in, right? So is it the truth? This is the truth. So this is the thing that we really want to get at. If you think about the gravitational constant, this is that magical value that's really out there in the world. But the sample is not actually the truth. It's just like a little bit of that truth, right? So when we drop our objects from the top of a building and, and measure how fast they come down, right? Um, we're really getting samples. And from those samples, we're trying to get at the truth. The sample is not the whole truth, but the sample does provide a window to the truth. But it's important to realize that the sample is not the actual truth itself. This is not what we want to really, really know about. We really want to know about the population, but we're using the sample in order to know about the population. All right, so some pros and cons, right? Um, so some pros of the population is this. Because it is the truth, if you happen to have all the information about the real population, it would be absolutely 100% accurate. However, here's the con. It's almost impossible to get. It's almost impossible to actually get the truth, the real population truth. For instance, um, let's say you just want to know what the real average height of every person in the United States is. Well, in order to do that, you would have to get measurements from every single person in the United States. And they, all those measurements would have to be 100% accurate. But let's say I give that to you. You even do that. By the time you finish recording all of those measurements, some people will have died and new people will have been born, right? So all of a sudden, your measurements wouldn't be accurate anymore, right? So it's almost impossible to actually get the entire population. Often in statistics books, they'll pick a small population. Like they'll say, consider all the people who attend your school. And they'll just shrink down the population so that uh, you could actually think about it without sort of feeling like your mind is being blown. But in the real world, it's basically impossible to get the real truth. On the other hand, the sample has the pro of being convenient. It's actually really easy to get data from just a sample of the population. Right? You don't have to get the whole population. You just have to get a sample of it. And so it's really convenient and easy to get. But here's the big con that you need to worry about. The con is that the sample might be what's called biased. And by biased, I don't necessarily mean like the sample's like racist or prejudiced in some way. I just mean that the sample may not be representative of the population. The problem with that is this. When we look at our sample, we're going to use our sample to try to get at the truth. If our sample is really different from the truth, then it might lead us astray. And that's called being biased. All right. So when we describe the population in terms of numbers and we, and we get some summary values for the population, those descriptive values are going to be called parameters. And a friend of mine who teaches statistics would say, P -p -p population p -p -p parameter. Okay. Um, on the other hand, for samples, you would use what's called statistics. Now, this word for statistics is the same word as the word for the class. But statistics covers all of statistics. Descriptive, inferential, population, sample, all that stuff. This is a sort of smaller use of that word. So, p -p 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 population and parameter, s -s 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 samples, statistics. Ta-da!